Hi all, in this video we are going to learn about Array. Where we will cover what is Array, how to display the content of an Array, assign the value, insert, copy any Array, remove the value inside an Array, and then we sort the Array, we pass the Array in any function as parameter passing, and then we are going to look um, a little bit about two dimensions Array, and finally we will go for the conclusion of the chapter. So what is an Array? If you still remember or if you realize that in chapter 1 and chapter 5, you have learned about variables. So each of the variables, we only can store one value in one variable. Let's say if you have declared int, int, um, integer, and then a user input. So every time when we get a user input, then that particular value will be stored in the variable called user input. And only one value can be stored at the same time. If you store another value, it will be replaced. So array is an extended version of variable where we can store more than one value in an array. Okay, and the syntax is simple, data type. So if you want to be de uh, declare as integer, just declare int, follow with the variable name, let's say user input, number, matrix number, user ID, is up to you, and then the size, follow with the size. So in order to let the compiler or computer know that this is an array, you have to include the square bracket, then follow with the semicolon. So the size is important, and um, this is one of the example. We have data type string, students underscore name as the variable name, and then we have a square bracket, we have size of 10. So this will tell the compiler that we have declared an array, and the array is having its capacity of 10, which is the size. This is the second example, students underscore ID, data type is integer, and then we have five capacity of five size. This is another example. In case if we know the content, the value, then we can assign to the array. But don't, don't forget, we must put the square bracket. So there is a mistake over here. We must put the square bracket. But this will not work. We have declared integer s underscore number array with the size of 3. But we assigned 5 values in this array. So what will be happen is 0, 1, 2, 3. 0, 1, 2, 0, 1, 2. We only can allocate 3 items or 3 elements. However, over here, we put 5 elements. So this will create a syntax error. Okay. okay, let's see for the practical. In a practical way, usually we will do this. We will, we will declare um, an array and then using um, constant for the size. For an example of constant integer size, we set to 100 and then we assign it to this array. So the purpose of doing that is to reduce the number of um, errors that we may create when we have a big program. Okay, constant size will help us to reduce um, the problems or the errors if we have any any intention want to change the size all right this will be much more practical so nothing is stopped when we first initiate an array and the size means the capacity of the array so i hope all of you for those who are new into this topic you can differentiate between the capacity and the size current size when we create a size means we have set uh, the capacity of an array okay maximum 100 means that only can go for 100 items but when we initialize them or when we declare them, uh, the, content, the content of the particular array is still empty. So what is an array? This is the example. We declare string, data type, students underscore name, and then we didn't specify the size. It is okay because we know what are the elements. Okay, we have Amina, Ali, and so on, and Timoy Moi. So if you calculate one by one, we have nine nine names that have been assigned to this array called students underscore name so you have to imagine that array can be stored in such a way uh, as uh, either as vertical or as horizontal okay and uh, the information is stored as first items first elements first items and then follow with ali as the second one okay so you can imagine it is vertical or horizontal it's up to you okay and then what you have to remember is this one Square, square bracket uh, start with uh, zero. This represent the positions. This represent the locations. If I want to refer to, let's say, students underscore name, and inside the square bracket is three. 
which means that I'm referring to Patricia. Okay, so you have to imagine, it's up to you to imagine whether it is vertical or horizontal, yeah? But the index, these positions, uh, we call it index. Index of five, which means Elni. Index of eight, which means Mui Mui. Okay, in this example. All right, uh, this is the index. So let's see. Let's try to um, figure out what is the answer for C out, student underscore name one, five, and seven. If we refer to these tables, if we found that student's name index 1 is Ali, so the answer is Ali. The second code refer to index 5, which is Elni. The third code, third line of codes, which is 7, refer to Ashley. Okay, I hope um, you're clear. When we want to display the content of an array, we can call for C out. Uh, and then we type the array, name the array itself, followed with the square bracket and the particular index of the item. Okay, but practically, we will go for all. We may select a number of um, items or elements from our array instead of one by one. So usually we will involve a for loop or maybe involve while loop. It's up to you whether you want to use while loop or for loop. Usually I will go for for loop because it's one line. And um, yeah, let's say this example is referred to for loop. Integer i start with 0 and then i smaller than the size of the array. So this size of array means that the current size of array. It is not the capacity. Yeah. So every time it will increase by one. So when I see out, I will print the students underscore name array. Start with the index of i, where i started with zero. So actually started with zero until the size of array. So usually we will do this huh, in the practical uh, in the coding part. So every time um, when we update the content of an array, we must keep track of the size, the changes of the size. Next, we will go for the assign value into an empty array. After we have created an array or initialized an array, the array is empty. So we can insert or we can assign any value in the particular array. For an example, this, try to understand the code that we have created an array with a size of 6. This is the capacity, capacity of 6. And start from 0, index 0 up to 5, I have this value. I assign the value to the particular index in my array so when i see out the particular array the output will be one four five three two nine so this is the way how we assign a value into an array this is another example i've declared an array called s underscore id and it has a capacity of 100 so what is the value inside this s underscore id array I do not know. Maybe it is empty. Maybe maybe the compiler assigned a value inside. I do not know. But it is not what I want. I want to assign index 2 with 1, index 4, 4, and index 0 is 5. So when we have a for loop and I want to see out index start with 0 until 5, okay, so I will assume that index 0, it is 5. Index 1, it is nothing. Or maybe 0. Index 2, which is 1. Index 3, nothing or 0. Index 4 is 4. Index 5, nothing or 0. So this is the output. Okay, let's try to understand this example. I have created S underscore ID array for capacity of 100, and these are the values inside. And then I have assigned these values in this index. So let's try to figure out about the answer. Right. So we know the index 0 is 1. And it will be replaced with 12. So the first digit will be 12. Or the first in, uh, integer will be 12. And then follow with 4. 5 will be replaced with 3. 6 maintain, but 7 will be replaced with negative 1. And this is the fifth one. Uh, sorry, index 5. Index 5 is 9 maintained. So the output will be 12, 4, 3, 6, negative 1, and 9. Let's check your answer. Okay, I hope you get this. So this is the way how we replace 
a value in an array. Okay, before this, the example is inserting, but now our array is having certain values, so we can replace it anytime as long as you prepare the codes and then the compiler will replace it. Next section, we are going to discuss about insert value in an array. So there are three cases could be happened. First is the array is empty and the size or the capacity of the array can support the requirement. This means the capacity is big, is big enough to fit all of the elements that you want to insert. Case two is the array has some existing value and then we want to insert a value at the back of the array. So you have to imagine you have an maybe um, array 10 values. Okay, and then you want to insert one more value at the back of the array. So the cache tree is referred to an array which has some value as well. And then we are going to insert a value somewhere of the array, middle or maybe at the beginning, maybe at the index two, maybe at the index five. Okay, so there are three cases. Let's go for cache one. Here is an example. We initialize the array with nothing. This is empty. Cache one is empty array, and then we can insert any value. All right, so this is the example of inserting. We assign a new value into the existing array, but this is not practical. Okay, this is not practical because usually we won't know what is the input. If you refer to the practical cache, user will provide the input instead of we assign it ourselves. Okay, so this is the better. This is a better uh, uh, example. An example. We define constant um, size for 10, which is referred to the capacity actually. So we have an array S underscore ID, capacity of 10, which is size of 10. And then we can assign any value, start from I up to five, or maybe up to 10, okay? And then insert one by one into an array. So it will loop this up instead of you assign it yourself, okay? But however, this is also not very practical because of the size. As I mentioned uh, just now that we have to keep track of the size. The size could change, could be reduced, could be increased from time to time. Depends on the case. Okay, So this is not practical. This is not a good practice. But this will do. Okay, We have a constant integer size of 10, which means that we set the capacity. And then we have the integer s underscore of id refer to the capacity of 10 okay this is an array and then we have the current size of zero where we assume that we assume in this case that our array started with nothing there is nothing in the array okay we um, declare another one which is integer for input so through this example we have a while loop to always check whether the current size is smaller than the capacity which is the size of the array Okay, if yes, then we will request to enter an integer. That particular integer will be insert using C in to input variable. And then the particular value will be assigned to the array for the particular size, which is the current size. Okay, so we have to assume that when the first time user enter an integer, it will be stored in the variable input. And then this variable will pass the value or assign the value into the array. The array started with current underscore size which is referred to zero initially which is zero then after that we increase the size by one so which means every time every loop we will increase the size by one okay so in this example we will get an integer repeat and repeat and repeat up to current size nine okay when you reach current size equal to ten it will stop so you will capture all of the ten inputs and then display so over here, this example, I only show you the for loop to display five first five items. Eh? You can change it if you want to display all items or maybe first three. Okay, but um, although we can do this, but in the practical parts, usually we will not request the user to enter all of the values in a single program. It should be based on um, the current information that the user has. If the user has five values, then the user will key in five values and then stop. Okay, but the capacity we set to maybe 10, maybe 100. We just want to avoid that uh, uh, the program, we just want to make sure that the program can fit number of uh, inputs. Okay, so we set the capacity. So the best way is to have this, where we set the rules that if the user enter a value or integer zero, then the program will stop. So we have two conditions in this while loop. 
The first one is the current size must be smaller than the capacity, which is the size of the array. And the second one, we have to make sure that the input is not zero. If it is zero, means that uh, it stop. Okay, the while loop will stop. So if this fulfill, if if this while loop um, is fulfilled, then we will see out enter an integer. If it's zero, to stop. This is the message. Okay, and then it will store it in the input variables, and we check if the input is not zero. Then the first thing we're going to do is assign the input value to the array. And then the array, which is referred to the current underscore size index. After that, we will increase the size. So after we insert one element or one value in the array, then next next ne next task is to increase the size. We tell the compiler, okay, one item has been included in the array. So we increase the size. So this loop will work until the user enter zero to stop. Okay, and the second and the second rule is it will reach the capacity. Then we will display the output. Okay, this is much more practical. So I hope you can understand this part, line seven until line fourteen, and try to apply in your lab exercise. Next, we go for insert data for case two, where we found that the array has some values, and we want to insert at the back of the array. We just want to top up to the array. So what should we do is, let's say we consider this example, we have current size 5. This is not the capacity, this is current size, meaning that how many items we have eh, that I preset. And then we have the capacity of 100 for the squares. So these are the values, existing values. Okay, we can um, display, we can see out the array values from index 0 until the current size, which is the first 5 elements in the array. Okay, if you code this and you run, you will get 0, 1, 4, 9, 16, yeah? And how to insert the data? There are two steps. First step is we increase the current size. We tell the computer that we increase the current size. And then um, we call for the array. With the current size minus 1, we assign a value, which is the next value. So what will be, what will be happen is now a new value will be assigned to the current size. Right, so your output will be having 0, 1, 4, 9, 16, and 25. 25. Okay, if you refer to some of the books, um, they will reverse it. They will reverse the way how I do. I do step one, increase the size first, and then I insert the value into the last part of the array. So this is the code. Uh, some of the book will do insert the value first, square current size equal to the value. Then step two, increase the size. So both are same. Okay, both are same. Nothing is different. The only difference is the steps. Whether you want to increase the size first or you want to uh, insert the value first. Okay, both will create same result. I hope this is clear. Okay, we go for the cache tree where the array has some values and we insert an array and a value somewhere of the array. So consider, reconsider the example we used just now. And now how are we going to insert um, a value somewhere of the array? Okay, if you refer to the code, previous code, we have declared current underscore size, which is 5. And if we imagine this is how the array looks like. Having value 0, 1, 4, 9, 16, and these are the positions or the index. Okay, let's say if you want to insert a value here, between 1 and 4, all right? What you should do is first, you have to increase the current size. So after you have increased the current size, you have to imagine that now your array look like this. The last part is referred to the current size. But what is the value? There is nothing. You have to imagine that there is nothing inside. Okay, so if you want to insert uh, a, a value somewhere in the middle, maybe one between 1 to 2, or maybe you want to replace this index 2, uh, 4 with something else, then what should you do? Okay, what should you do? So step 2 is identify where to insert, where you want to insert. Okay, so we cannot just simply put, let's say if you want to replace this index 2 with another value, then it's easy. But if you want to insert, then you cannot simply delete this one and insert a new value. Then it's called replace, that is not insert. If you want to insert, means that you have to push all of this existing value backwards. Backward. 
all right so the step three is to copy the items backward and for this example i show you the animation how it works first one is 14 uh, sorry um, index 4 we have to move this value here move this value to the last uh, elements or last positions in our array so it becomes like this 16 move to here but we did it we didn't delete the value inside the index 4 okay we just copy to here 16 and then we move 9 to here actually we just um, replace it okay replace it become 9 and 9 and then we replace again between 2 and 3 indexes we copy the 4 to here to replace the 9 so now we found that this one we want to replace with new value we can replace it okay assign value in the required index so this is how we insert a value in an array we cannot just simply insert it but there are steps all right so this is the code first one step one is to increase the size and then the second one is to identify where we want to insert the particular item so we have to set it or we can request from user if you request from user then you need to replace uh, step two with c out and c in okay, otherwise um, this is a simple example then step three is to copy the items you need a for loop to copy the items and the step four is to assign the value which is the insert items okay with the new value so my new value is three and after you have go for the step, step four you can see out now the value is like this compared to original is one four uh, 014916 now i have successfully insert three integer three in between one and four okay so please you have to remember these four steps for inserting any value next we will go for copy whether we can copy an array from one array to another array the answer is yes okay and students always ask when we uh, have an array can we copy the value i'm not sure what is the purpose but um, in some of the lab students will ask that the answer is yes for an example we have an array of squares we have an array of factor and the array of square is having this value so can we copy to the factor yes can just use a for loop and what you do is assign the array in the square to the factor using a for loop that's all so it will loop the for loop will loop and copy everything from the first array to the second array but there is one thing you have to pay attention which is the size okay the size you have to make sure that the first array when it copy the value to the second array the second array is having um, sufficient capacity to fit the first array data otherwise error will be occurred okay so you have to imagine that you have two containers you want to put everything in the first container to the second container you have to make sure the second container is big enough they can fit everything from the first container okay, that is the logic okay next process we go for remove remove value in an array so there are two cases happens case one is the array has some value we remove a value at the back of the array okay the second case is the array has some value and then we remove the value somewhere in the middle or maybe beginning of the array let's look at the case one case one is very simple um, let's consider this example again the same example we are going to use so only one step if you want to remove values from an array assisting an array okay at the back at the back of the array then just apply current size minus minus so what will be happen is this value actually will not be deleted 16 in this case will not be deleted it will not be removed but our size has been reduced so when we want to display a particular array we call for the current size okay where we have reduced it so we assume that the value has been removed but it is not huh? it is not because we can't remove the particular value in an array we only can assume it is not there i hope this is clear and the second case is uh we want to insert somewhere oh, sorry we want to delete we want to delete or we want to remove yeah so this is the current size we have five and then square this is the array so what should we do if we want to remove uh, any value in the array 
All right. So the first step we have to do is we have to identify which one we want to remove. And we have to set the index or we have to get the index. And then second, we have to copy the value forward. After we have identified, let's say I want to remove this one, 9. It is located as index 3. So I have to set, I refer to index 3, then I have to remove it. Okay, I detect it. So what should I do is I copy this particular value from index 4, 16, copy to here. And then I hide the last um, index. Okay, that will do. So I'll show you the uh, animations. Okay, let's say I want to um, remove this four in the array of index two. Okay, I want to remove it. So what should I do is in the index three, I have the value of nine. Nine, I will copy here, move to here. So it become nine and nine. All right, and then I repeat the step. Index four, value 16, I will copy to index three. So become value 16. And then the last steps, I will reduce the current size, where now it will look like this. Okay, this is the way how we, this is the process how we remove one value from an array. So here is the code. Step one, set or identify which value we want to remove, and then we set the index. And then we copy the value forward. Okay, and then the step three is reduce the current size by one. So we will height. Actually, it's not height. Um, we just move all of the value forwards and then height the last one. Okay, so we assume four has been removed. So this is the process in array, yeah? how we remove it. So I hope this is clear about removing a value in an array. Next, we go for sorting in array in an array. So it's simple. It is simple that we can sort the number in ascending order. Where step one is to include this header file algorithms. And then step two, we call the function called sort, sorting. So the syntax is simple, just SORT, follow with the array variable, the array variable plus the current size. So when you type this in your code and you run it, your array will be sort. For example, I have an array square 094316. Okay, so this is not sorted. This is not sort I in ascending order. So what should we do is type uh, sort. This is the function. And then the array, which is here, array is squares, comma, the array itself again, plus, the symbol is plus, current underscore size. And then don't forget about the semicolon. So when you want to apply this line of code, make sure you have included the header file algorithms. So the results in this case will be 0, 3, 4, 9, 16. The compiler will sort your data uh, or the values in the array in one second. Okay, next part, we will go for array as parameter passing. So in some of the cases or many cases, basically, we will have main program and then we will have the sub program. So when we want to pass an array, yes, in our main program, we can do this. Okay, we must make sure that the array has been declared and then we call the function, the array, which array that you want to pass, comma, with its size okay so in our function when you want to declare the title or the header of the function please make sure you have typed the data type for the array don't forget about this square bracket you don't have to insert the size huh? you don't have to put a number here because the size is comma here int size so automatically the compiler will know that this front part is referred to array and the back part is referred to the size So we must, we must pass both array and the size to a function. Okay, let's try to understand this function. We have um, some function named sum. We have an array which is called square. And then we have the current size of this particular array. Okay, so this, this example, we have declared total as double and assign a value as zero. We have a for loop. Okay, the loop from index zero until the current size. And then the process involved is total equal to total plus squares, which means that this total will sum every single value in this particular array 
and then it will return to the main program, which is here, to the main program. Okay, so in this example, the answer will be 32. We will sum 0, 9, 4, 3, and 16, and then it will return 32. And here, it shows that this value, these values in the array will not be updated. We just call. We just call any value that has been stored in that particular array, and then we use it. Okay, so can we update the array value? If you still remember in the last chapter that I have told you, we cannot simply update a value variable when we pass it into a function. Okay, so what about an array? What about an array? The answer is yes. When you pass one array in a function, basically you can just update and change the value. You don't have to put any ampersand symbol or whatever. You don't need to do that. Okay, so this is the example. We have multiply, function called multiply, and then the array is called values. We set the size, we set a factor. So in this case, the uh, array variables equal to array multiply factor. So every time when this for loop loops, it will multiply its, its value, the array value, with a factor. If the factor is 2, it will multiply 2. Okay, every uh, value in the array itself and I didn't I didn't put return array eh? there is no return array I put void and you don't have to worry that the array value will be updated so there are a few things that you must remember when using an array the first one is you can pass an array into the functions and update the array values you don't have to call for um, any specific uh, symbol or whatever but you must remember you cannot return an array. And in fact, you don't need to return an array. You can update the value. So why you want to return the array, isn't it? And then the second one is you can update the size of an array as well, because sometimes in some of the cases, you might want to update the size. After you have passed it to the functions, you want to increase the size, or maybe you want to reduce the size of the array. Uh, I mean the current size, all right? So you can do that. If you want to do that, you have to make sure the size, huh? the size that you have passed into the particular functions, um, you pass it using reference parameter, which is referred to the n percent symbol. So you have to pass this symbol. Then you can increase the size of that particular array in the function. Otherwise, you can't increase the size. Even though the array has been updated its value, but then the size is still maintained. No change. Okay, so that's all about um, one dimension array. I hope you get the point of inserting, replacement, remove, and then um, pass as parameter uh, passing to the functions. And next, we will go for two dimensions. In the real case, in the actual programming parts, maybe you will go for multi dimensions, three dimensions, four dimensions, five dimensions. And basically, the um, concepts are same. The concepts are same. But we will go for two dimensions only. And here is the example. Of two dimension array, you have, they have to de de declare the size x, they have to declare the size y. So x will be on the left side, y will be on the right side. Okay, when you have a z, z will be on the last part. So if they imagine that every time when you declare one dimension, it is at the back. Okay, it is at the back. So in this example, we have an array called square, and its size is two dimension array. This example shows us that we can insert any value into the array as well. We initialize them. Okay, so when we initialize them, don't forget to put um, the curly bracket. All right, and then this will represent the row, second row, third row. Okay, so one row we follow with the comma to separate the elements or the items. And when we want to call them, when we want to insert anything, we should go for two for loops okay don't forget um, here this is the row this is the column the size x is the row size y is the column so from here you have to make sure that the first the first for loop is referred to the row the second for loop is referred to the column and in our array in our array when we want to call them the first the left hand side one is referred to the row and the um, right hand side one is referred to the column Okay, if you accidentally um, reverse the order, then you will get a different result. So you have to pay more attention when you want to code 
multi-dimensions or two-dimensions array. You have to make sure row and columns. Um, yeah, you, you can differentiate them properly. Okay, so same case for two-dimensions or multi-dimensions, we also can assign value, we also can insert, we also can copy, remove, we can sort them, and then we also can go for the array uh, as parameter functions. Yeah, but um, you must use a nested for loop. One loop, one for loop is not sufficient, so you have to go for two for loops in order to perform all of this. Okay, and then for sorting, if you want to use sort algorithms, uh, uh, the header file, algorithms header files, then you have to first flatten it to one dimension before you sort it, and then convert back to two dimensions. Okay, after the sorting is done. Otherwise, you cannot, uh, there will be error. Right? And then for parameter passing, yes, and you have, and you have to pass both column and row size uh, uh, at the same time in your function. Okay, this is the example. We have column total, this is the function name. And then we pass the array called table. Uh, this this part must be empty. You don't have to put row. But the second part, you must put the column, the words columns, which represent uh, columns in your main program. And then you declare in rows and in columns. Okay, so you pass this info to the function, then only you can use this uh, array. All right. Okay, so um, as a conclusion, there are some things that you must remember. The first thing is the size of an array cannot be changed after it is created. So when you first initialize it, you have to make sure the capacity of the array can fit the problems. Once you have, um, you, you have know what is the problems and you want to create the program, you have to make sure the size is sufficient. The second one is you have to get the size right before you define the array because the compiler has to know the size to build it. Okay, you cannot just simply leave it empty. Right? And then the third one, the function must be told about the number of elements, how many elements you have passed, which means that the current size, the current size and uh, the items, the elements inside the array. So it cannot be hold more than one initial capacity. Okay. Uh, more, sorry, it can cannot hold more than its initial capacity, which means that if you have declared an array with 10 capacity, though, then you cannot put 11, 11 elements inside the array. You have to make sure the container can fit uh, the required items or elements. Okay, let's try for the coding parts. Uh, go for lab 6 and try for all of the codes, uh, all of the exercise. Thank you for watching this video.